In 1948, the Soviet Union became the second nation to explode an atomic weapon. It triggered an arms race with the United States and fear of all-out nuclear war. At MIT's Lincoln Labs, an obscure experimental computer called Whirlwind was suddenly enlisted in a new high-profile purpose in the nation's defense. And a young electrical engineer named Ken Olson found himself a manager of its implementation. Some 30 years later, Ken Olson returned to Lincoln Labs to talk about the legacy of those early years. Whirlwind was probably the first personal computer. <laughs> it was a big one. The racks were 26 inches wide and 11 feet high. One of the things I learned from that was that a computer always should be higher than a man. <laughs> it never seems worth the money unless it's high. See? When we started digital, there were a few things we wanted to introduce to the world. And one of them was interactive computing. And Whirlwind started it. As he grew digital into a global, multi-billion dollar enterprise, one challenge persisted. There's something great about being in your 20s with the enthusiasm and the fresh knowledge, and there's all that accumulated knowledge that should be there when you're in your 60s. And keeping people so enthusiastic that they want to go back to work and generate new things is the challenge. This is his lasting achievement. Olson's insight into the value of interactive computing became the paradigm for a new industry. Up until digital was invented as a corporation, uh, you had mainframe computers that were behind glass walls, and none of us could get into those glass walls. Tech really brought computing to people. And, and a lot of what's happened with PCs and with networks today is a result of the idea of bringing computing to people. That chapter, which was, I think, an essential chapter in the development of computing in the world, that chapter was led by, was led by DEC. Today, we have things that we wear on our belts that are really full-blown computers. And you cannot go from the mainframe behind a closed door to things that are on our belts today. In between, you have to have a company that knew how to bridge that. And that's what digital's legacy is. Digital's legacy is in pioneering networking, Ethernet, email, and the Internet. Even as late as 95, I'll attribute DEC as being the dominant force of creating the components for the Internet. All of those were done using alphas and vaxes, so that first wave of the Internet really rode on vax. Very few people know this, that the labs within digital actually built the system that NASDAQ originally ran on. And that was the legacy of Ken. They did some early work on, on IPv6, which is version 6 of the internet protocols, which uh, even today are now beginning to get accepted as a way to uh, take the internet to, uh, to a larger, larger scale. The product innovation was explicit. The structural innovation was immense but implicit. I don't think they recognized or knew that they were inventing a, a kind of a new way of, of work getting done. It was a new way experienced by everyone Ken Olson touched. If you talk to the people who were down in the middle of the organization, they have a, an intuitive sense that we worked for a great company. DEC was unique because it was such a strong values-based company. Ken, from my point of view, he was the value. His values were the company's values, and it meant being ethical, being honest, being kind to people. Without him, I don't think I would have the career I have now. I had no college education. I had what they call digital street smarts. I learned from digital. We don't talk about respect very much, and you don't have to talk about it. You can feel it and see it, and that permeated the organization. In Ken Olson's organization, there was power and personal responsibility at every level. If he thought someone was doing a, a good job, it didn't matter if they were high or low in the company, uh, he would take their opinions. 
I don't think there was any kind of a quota system for so many women or so many minorities, but I think people were given a fair shot. They used to go to Ken. A lot of the people would go to Ken, the engineers or whatever, and complain about something I wouldn't allow them to do, but he'd always tell them, she's the boss, and that always worked, you know? because I never tried to be the boss. I just tried to do the right thing. And uh, if they didn't like it, I couldn't help that, could I? <laughs> People would talk about the company as if, you know, they were part owner. They, we, loved working there. Employees felt that empowerment all the way down to the lowest levels within the corporation and came up with new solutions. In the 1960s and 70s, in a nation torn by racial strife and social injustice, digital employees felt empowered to come up with their own solutions. We took that on as a charter. We recruited 500 kids. We married them with managers in the company, managers at the colleges, managers in the community. We had a support staff at Freedom House. We did uh, tutorials all summer. And if any of these kids got in trouble during the academic year, uh, we would get resources to them to get them up to snuff. We had a 96% retention. All these kids graduated. They're remarkably successful. They own their own companies. They're lawyers, they're doctors, uh, they're investors, all because of the Olson legacy. Ken and his wife, Alaki, just uh, the goodness of their hearts said, I want to fund that. And it became the most exciting thing in Boston. I would just argue that because the doors closed officially as Digital Equipment Corporation doesn't mean that we're not all still living and breathing it. If you look at the people in the computer industry over the last 30 years, many of them came from the digital culture. I can go th all through the industry and find deck people right at the top. I mean, what a legacy. We set the standard because of Ken Olson, and that standard still exists today. He's, in many ways, wasn't just a technology visionary, but an organizational visionary, and a lot of Ken Olson's legacy was organizational innovation. He created not only a company, but an industry, and he created an environment that gave thousands of us the opportunity to grow, to make mistakes, to learn. The nobility of, of the deck story is in how you create an organization through a management philosophy, Ken's philosophy, that truly makes people feel like they are complete human beings and that the work itself is enriching and enlivening. And unfortunately, it rarely exists because there aren't very many people like Ken Olson. I'll be ever thankful for the good things I learned, which is largely in the area of keeping people interested, motivating them, and making work a fun thing to do and a satisfying thing to do.